All right, it is time for another mock draft. We've done two so far. Uh, so the premise of this, we are going to draft from every spot in a 12-team draft, um, half point per reception, um, and uh, just see what the different strategies are for uh, for each spot. So as you are consuming this, uh, mock draft one, mock draft two are available. Let's give it a go with mock draft three. So we've already claimed it. This is on sleeper, by the way. Um, and so let's get into it. Uh, all right, so we have drafted. Uh, Christian McCaffrey and Tyreek Hill go 1-2. This is nice. Uh, we didn't get CeeDee Lamb in our first one, so we will get him here. Um, and so we are going wide receiver there in our first spot. Bijan Robinson uh, went at 5 after Jefferson at 4. Then it was Chase, Gibbs, Amon Ross St. Brown, Brees Hall, uh, Garrett Wilson. Uh, oh, sorry, A.J. Brown uh, went at 8. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown goes 11th, followed by Puka Nakua, Saquon Barkley, Marvin Harrison Jr., Jonathan Taylor, uh, Devontae Adams, Kyron Williams, Drake London uh, goes uh, to Team 7, Josh Allen off the board in the second round, followed by uh, Travis Etienne and Devon Achan. So, uh, a couple of um, different type of players going off this time when we haven't had uh, a quarterback go this early just yet. Um, so, providing a, a few different looks that we haven't had before. Olave has not been there. Um, in the time that we have done this. Also, uh, Sam Laporta hasn't. I liked waiting until like the fourth and sixth round to, to be able to, to get our tight ends and our quarterback. So I, I don't mind trying to, to wait it out in this spot here. All the noise around Ayuk at this point, we're probably going to avoid that. Henry and Jacobs, I don't love it. And Kelsey, I feel like there might be a bit of a dip there. Um, so I am going to go Olave. I don't love the quarterback situation, but Olave has been able to survive that. And so I, I, I find him an interesting player. So we're going to go Olave here. Uh, and we're going to go back to back with wide receiver to start. After that, it went Derrick Henry, Laporta, Debo Samuel, who has been our boy in the first couple of these, and Brandon Ayuk go next. So now we have um, a spot where we are, I think, really going to need a running back uh, because it does fall off here after this with Josh Jacobs uh, being available, um, as is Isaiah Pacheco, uh, Rashad White as well, James Cook are, are those available. Um, so I, I think we are probably going to try to double up on running back here. So I don't I don't love the Jacobs option, but I still think he is a pretty good running back. He is still just 26 years old on what I think is going to be a good offense. So we'll go Josh Jacobs in this spot. Um, and then Pacheco goes almost immediately after Kelsey went as well. Um, but we're, I'm kind of hoping there's one of Cook or Mixon still left. Um, so you see Collins, Waddle, Mahomes goes, uh, a couple more wide receivers in Evans and Diggs, and then Rashad White goes. Uh, we're seeing the run on quarterback here with Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, CJ Stroud also going. Joe Mixon did come off of the board, so that is a little unfortunate for us. Um, and so now we are in this interesting spot here where I don't love not having... Like, I, I don't love the running back options if we wait any longer here at running back. Um, but I am a little bit worried about where we're at quarterback and tight end wise. I think we can wait on quarterback a little bit longer than we can on tight end here. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Cook, hoping that um, team two, who doesn't have a tight end yet, hoping they don't go tight end in this spot, although they probably go Devonta Smith here, or they probably go Trey McBride. I don't love Kincaid there. Um, so you know what? I'm going to try, I'm going to take a bit of a gamble here, and I am going to go Trey McBride and hope that one of the running backs we want is still there. So McBride goes, immediately James Cook goes, Devonta Smith and Kenneth Walker both go. That one stings a little bit. Um... So now we are looking for a second running back here. There's Kamara, Jones, Connor, Montgomery, Swift, and Ramondre Stevenson. So I don't love any of those options, admittedly. Um, at quarterback, it's Anthony Richardson, Joe Burrow also available here, and then Kyler Murray. Feels a little early for Kyler Murray. I think we can wait on that and take a bit of a shot. But I don't love, like, I, I Alvin Kamara... It just doesn't seem like that burst is there for me with him. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of options in this area that I just don't really like. And we talked about this on Mock Draft 2, where this is why I don't mind fourth, fifth, sixth round going with the quarterback, going with the tight end. So we're going to give it a bit of a different look. And we're going to go Joe Burrow as our quarterback here in the fifth round. Um... After that, Kamara, Jones, and Dell. Like, none of these options that are coming off really excite us. 
Um, and so we, we really wanted two players of the McBride, Cooker, Walker area. Um, I just don't trust it with Kincaid. I guess Kittle was still there. We probably could use that as a safety blanket now in hindsight um, and, and just kind of rolled with it. But I do like now coming up on this, um, we have Raheem Mostert still available. Sixth round feels a, a touch high on the, the, the value. I think we can kind of play the, the, the ADP game here and risk it with him. And... So I, I, what I'm going to do now is going to go with Jaden Reed, uh, one of the young, exciting receivers for the Green Bay Packers. It is doubling up on the Packers offense, but Jaden Reed um, is just an intriguing talent to me. And so to, to get him here in the sixth round, you feel all right about that one. Uh, Adunze goes, and then it's Prescott, Addison, Kyler Murray, and now here in the seventh, I do feel like we should go Raheem Mostert. He is our, our, our number two running back. So I don't love our running back options right now, um, but again, I like the tight end we have. I like the quarterback we have and our wide receivers are elite. So I think maybe a bit of a focus now on the, the running back spot as it comes around. But as I'm saying that a huge running back run just goes, uh, while I was saying, you know what, let's maybe focus on some running back depth. Uh, Najee Harris, Jonathan Brooks, uh, Tony Pollard, Nick Chubb, Javonta Williams, uh, Zach Moss, Jalen Warren, and Devin Singletary all go. So we miss out on a bit of a running back run here. Um, there is Austin Eckler who is available, as is Trey Benson and Brian Robinson. But I think we can get Robinson a little bit later. Ridley is not one I, I'm going with. It was just too inconsistent last year. Uh, Deontay Johnson, I just don't trust it. I do think that Will Levis is going to be looking DeAndre Hopkins' way quite a bit. So I don't mind going with DeAndre Hopkins here and taking a bit of a risk on the, the running back situation um, for our next pick. So let's go DeAndre Hopkins here. After that, it is Ridley, Johnson, Brian Thomas, Christian Watson. And so no running backs come off of the board. Um, so the running backs that are available right now, we have Austin Eckler, Trey Benson, Brian Robinson, Tajay Spears, Gus Edwards. Those are the backs that are available. Austin Eckler, I like. I just I don't think he's going to be the number one there, but I don't think our guy Brian Robinson is going to be there when we come back. So I don't mind Brian Robinson in the ninth round there. I think he is going to be the starter out in Washington and give us some, some good minutes uh, out of the running back spot. And again, a little bit of depth in that area. But one thing that's interesting, we focused on a few guys at wide receiver um, in the first couple with Watson, with Smith and Jigba, and with Jamison Williams. None of them were, I guess we could have gone with Watson over uh, Nuke Hopkins. That probably should have been the, the way we went there, but none of them were really available. This one is one of my favorite picks. We, we have been getting this so far. Um, it is Jerome Ford um, here in the 10th round. I think he's the starting running back for Cleveland. I think he was solid when called upon a season ago. And so I, I like that as filling out a bit of our, our, our running back depth. And then Zach Charbonnet, Kind of is the only name out there right now that really interests me. Um, if anything happens to Walker out in Seattle, Charbonnet is our guy. So we were a little hurt by that that big running back run. Um, but I think getting Ford and Charbonnet really does set us up in a pretty good spot here um, for our running backs. And so we're going to come around to the 12th round. It's a 15-round draft. Um we do have to draft a defense. We do have to draft a kicker. So we really only have a couple of picks left. Um, and this is a lottery ticket that hasn't really been here for us in a spot that made sense so far. J.K. Dobbins was very talented in school. And I, I, I just watched, it just happened to pop up, um, some J.K. Dobbins college tape. The guy, again, I say tape, it was on fucking YouTube. I sound so pretentious when I say that. But, um, he is so talented. And I, I, I just, I get, like, he has been banged up or whatever. If he can even stay remotely healthy in that offense that is going to be pretty run heavy, I think there could be something there. And so for a bit of a lottery ticket in that spot, don't hate it at all. Um, and so it comes back around to us. And this is where I'm not really in love with any of the options that are available. So I'm going to get a head start on the defense here. And I'm going to go with the San Francisco 49ers defense, taking it in the 13th round. Uh, we miss out on Ricky Pearsall which would have been the other one that I would have taken, especially if Ayuk gets moved. Um, that, that is an option that could be rather intriguing. But we're going to see the defense run kind of sneak up on us here. 
And so instead of getting the 11th best defense, getting the, the top one feels pretty good. And now there, there's a couple of options that are left. Dontavian Wicks with Green Bay is one that might be a little bit interesting. Um, Roman Wilson, maybe, although there's some injury things going on there. Uh, just looking at who is kind of going to be our last dart throw in this particular draft. There isn't a whole lot that is there that I absolutely like, okay, this is the guy we have to take with our last pick in the um, last position pick, I guess uh, I should say here. Um, I There is like 5% of me that wonders if we have a Jahan, uh, Jahan Dotson comeback this year. So I don't mind the Dotson pick there. Um, we miss out on a couple of the kickers with Tucker and with Butker, but we weren't going to draft Butker anyway. Um, and we are in a good spot to get Evan McPherson, the, the kicker that we have been targeting. So I didn't love how this one went. Um, th there's just that that extra team in that turn doesn't really give you a whole lot of options there with, um, well, it still gives you quite a few options, but it, it leaves you a little bit more vulnerable when you're waiting for guys coming around the turn. So our starting lineup, uh, our quarterback would be Joe Burrow. Our running backs are Josh Jacob and, and Raheem Mostert. Um, our wide receivers, CeeDee Lamb and Chris Olave with the tight end of McBride. Um, and for our flex, you have Reed out of Green Bay or Hopkins. And then we have Robinson, Ford, Charbonnet, and, Dob and uh, Dobbins as our running back depth with Jahan Dotson being a backup wide receiver. So we maybe could have built up our depth at wide receiver, maybe a little bit more, but although looking at it now, I still think it's pretty good. But overall, I still think team two might've been a little bit better um, when we did mock draft number two. Uh, a couple of notes on this one. I do think that maybe we waited on running back a little bit too long. And I think I panicked a little bit on tight end and quarterback. There was still a George Kittle um, buffer there. I think if we get James Cook in the McBride spot and get Kittle around later, I feel so much more better, better about it. So like for, for those watching on YouTube, in this area here, if we go Cook in this spot, we get Kittle here. Um, in the fifth round, and we get Murray instead of Jalen Reed, and then round it out with Mostert in there, I, I think we are golden. So that that's something I just panicked a little bit on the, the quarterback and the tight end, because team one, we got absolutely annihilated in that spot. So that is going to do it for mock draft number three. Again, if you are just tuning in for the mock draft, uh, show's called Couch Potato Diary on YouTube and in podcast form. If you're watching this, make sure you like it. If you listen, make sure you review it. Follow me on social media. I'm at Primetime Klein, and I'll talk to all of you Later.